time with me briefly before we meditate on the word Christ. Let us pray one more time. Veni Sancti Spiritus, O come Holy Spirit, pour your amazing spirit into our hearts and minds so that we could hear what you want us to hear and do what you want us to do according to your will. In the beautiful name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So friends, once in a while, we ask, we ask the very important question. What is prayer? What is prayer? What am I supposed to say in prayer? How should we pray? How do others pray, by the way? Is there any correct way of praying? What should be my mind's orientation when it comes to prayer? We Christians ask those questions from time to time, including myself, whether we've been to the church for the past 40 years or for four months. Especially for those who have started joining the Christian community, they may ask, they have asked those questions. How do you pray? And how am I supposed to pray in the church or in my private life? And in Luke's passage for this morning, we find that even the beloved followers of Jesus, they have the same questions. They ask, oh Jesus, great rabbi, would you teach us how to pray? We want to pray. Would you kindly show us, share your thoughts on the Christian prayer? That's the question that's happening in the book of Luke's chapter, Luke's gospel. And our big brother Jesus, he's very kind enough to provide his instructions on the Christian prayer, which we find in the message passage for this morning. Those passages are on the bulletin. So church, this is what I'm going to do this morning. I'd like to share some thoughts of mine on the teaching of Jesus, of the Christian prayer. And as you may know, there are several components in the teaching of Jesus of the Christian prayer, the Lord's Prayer. So probably tonight, this morning, I will end up covering only the first half of the teaching of Jesus. And if I happen to see you again, I don't know why and how, and when, if I to see you again, I will be covering the second half Come on of the Lord's Prayer. Come on now, Maybe next time. Who knows? All right, so that's the plan I have this morning. And that being said, let me dive into the real meat of the message for this morning. So here we go. In Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, this is how you can or how you should start your prayer, which begins with what? Well. Our Father who are in heaven. Oh. Let me say that again. Our Father who are, are in, in heaven. heaven. Thank you, church. Well, this morning, let's not get into the pronoun controversy here today. Right? Jesus could have called God our mother, our uncle, or our auntie. But grandpa, grandma, who knows? Many other ways. All right? We've got to admit, by the way, he was living through the patriarchal culture. And in that environment, in the mind of his audience, father was the most useful and familiar designation of any divine being. So this morning, I want to, and we want to be a little tolerant to brother Jesus who only uses the endocentric designation of God. Then, we this said, what's important for us this morning when Jesus says, our Father who is in heaven, what is not important is not what is stayed on the surface, but rather what's really important is what's implied when Jesus calling God the Father or a parent figure. Yes, so this morning, I will go with it. God as a parent figure. Yeah. I think we should stick to that idea this morning. God as parent. And I believe that's truly what's implied with Jesus saying, our father or our parent who is in heaven. 
So how about this? Our parent who are in heaven. That means Jesus easily could have called God my dad, right? My daddy, papa, or pop, our God, my mama, my mimi, and mom. I liked it so much. I liked it. God calling God my daddy and my mom, pop, and mom. And God is my parent who is always caring, loving, and embracing no matter what. Come on now. Church, can you recall the time? You may recall the time when you called your mom and dad and said, Mom, I'm in trouble now. And do you ever recall, do you, do you ever have done this like you, when your children call you and say, Dad, I'm in trouble. Right. I mean, I, I, I really need your help. What did you do? <laughs> what did they do when you call them saying, Mom, I need your prayer. I'm in trouble. Or can you recall the time when you called your mom and they say, Dad, I got a new job. Mom, I'm engaged. Dad, I'm coming home this weekend, this Sunday. Let's go fishing, go hiking. Let's go to the church together. All right. I miss going to my home church, the Church of Vancouver Baptist. <laughs> what have you done here? When they say, I want to be there. That's how we communicate our children and our parents, is it not? Now my mom, she's now in Korea, and she's 82, 83, 84. I just stopped counting because uh, she's my mom. <laughs> Whenever I call in Korea, I say, Mom, how are you doing? Is everything OK? Then she answers, always like this, son, my little son, I'm the baby in my family. I have three more, all the siblings above me. So my mother always goes like, son, my little son, how are you doing out there? Out there, she means, out there in the United States. <laughs> how are you doing out there? Is everything okay? And I always goes like, yes, mom, I'm doing all right. Then she always goes like this, son, do not ever forget that. I pray for you every single morning. Right, right, right. Little son, I pray for you. Do not ever forget that. Every single morning I pray for you. And whenever my mom says, I truly know what she means by that. That means that every single morning she would go to the only morning service that the Korean church has every single morning at 5 o'clock. I mean 5 a.m., not 5 p.m., friends. The crazy Korean church, all of them, they meet at 5 a.m. Of course, not all of them, but many of them come to the church to pray. And my mom goes there, walking and walking. I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I don't know. She doesn't have a car, so she has to walk and walk at 5 a.m., 5 a.m. And I remember going to the church at 5 a.m. with my mom holding her hands. Mom, where are you going? We go to church. <laughs> this is 5 a.m., Mom. We go to church to meet God. And I will pray for you and other siblings and for the world and for the broken people and for the sick. We go to church and we pray. So whenever I call my mom, mom, what are you doing, little son? I still go to church to pray for you because I'm your mommy. Is that right? <laughs> now back to Jesus saying, God, you are my dad. Daddy, papa, my mama and mommy and mom. That means Jesus knows God is praying for him. God is cheering for him too. And God still takes care of Jesus, his only son. His only son was going to be staying sometime 
on the cross. So as brothers and Jesus, brothers and sisters of Jesus, we share, I believe, this same God with Jesus. The same God who's being our own papa and mama and daddy yes, and our papa. Vancouver Baptist, brothers and sisters in Christ, I believe that, I truly believe that, that is the same God we've had and we've experienced over the past 400 years of racial conflict, segregation, torturing, marginalization, deportation, child abuse, and the new Jim Crow, as Professor Michel Alexander puts it, which includes 200 years of vicious violence on Asian American lives, their lives and labors and business over the 200 years and 400 years. The thing is, during the time, during the unbearable time of sorrow, suffering, and social conflict, I have asked, and we have asked this question, has our Father God left us alone? I don't think so. Has our Mother God ever said we are worthless? No. Has our Papa God ever said our salvation is impossible? No. Has our mama God ever said our children never belongs here? No. Has our God ever said reconciliation is miles away? No. I don't think so. Instead, our father God has always said, I am with you. Always. No matter what. Amen. And our mother God has always said, you are truly worthy of the whole world, every single one of us. And our Papa God has always said, our salvation is already here, Amen. right now. And I believe our Mama God has always said, her children, me and you all, truly and fully belong here in the promised land of God, alongside with our Native American brothers and sisters. And our Heavenly God has always said, I believe, reconciliation between the misguided oppressors of the dominant culture and the oppressed are always possible in the holy name and holy care and love and glory of our God, Adonai. Reconciliation is always possible. I believe that's what Dr. King has preached from this pulpit a long time ago as well. Our God of care and love always will come down upon us and take care of us, saying and taking care of us and singing again and ever again, you are my child. You are my beloved son. You belong here. You belong here, God's house and God's home. And I believe that's why, that's why I truly believe we can still continue singing this song, which is what? Swing low, swing chair. Can we sing the two lines, first the two lines? Can we sing that together? Swing low, swing chair. Coming for, coming for to carry me. Swing low, swing low, swing chair. Coming for to carry let you sing one more time. Swing low, swing chair. Swing low, swing chair. Our home is here, right? Coming for to carry me. Our papa got swing low, swing chair, swing chair. Home, sweet home, is there right? Home.
where my papa and mama got always at me with open arms and generous hearts. That is the home I believe we are turning to every single Sunday. And that's how we pray, Jesus says. That's why we've got to pray. And that's how God takes care of us. God is my great papa and mama and all of us as God's beloved children. Vancouver Baptist, I believe, that's what Jesus truly implies when he says, our father, our parent, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, hallowed be thy name. So that is what comes right after that, isn't it right? What comes next is quite interesting. After saying, our father who are in heaven, Jesus goes like, uphold, or hallow be, uphold the holy name, or hold the holiness, your name. And our keen attention could go to the word holiness. In original Hebrew, holiness adopts the word kadosh, or kadosh. In the Hebrew Bible, this word is solely designated to God alone. Yahweh, God alone, can have holiness. Kadosh, Kedusha, the most holy one. The creator, the sustainer of the universe. So Jesus seems to teach us that, yes, God comes to us as our father, mother, and papa, and mama, but at the same time, our God must be the most holy one in the universe. Our God is Yahweh God. Our God is Jehovah Shalom. Our God is Yahweh Adonai. And our God is Jehovah Sama, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Melech, Jehovah Rapha, Elohim, El Shaddai, and Jehovah Roy, which means God is my shepherd. All those holy names only belong to whom? Our God alone. Just like that. Our God is the most holy one in this world to whom we pray because this holy one will hear us always as our papa and mama to whom we pray every moment, every day, and all the day long. And that is the God, Jesus says, who hears our prayers. Our prayers. Jesus says, our God hears as the most holy one. German theologian, Ludolf Otto, strange name, that's a German theologian, Ludolf Otto. He has a very useful concept for this kind of divine experience, which comes as he's like mysterium tremendum. How about that? That's not English, right? It's a lot. <laughs> mysterium tremendum at fascinance, which can be loosely translated as the holy mystery of God as both trembling and fascinating. That means when we human beings encounter the most holy God, we should be trembling. Is that right? At the same time, we are so fascinated and enchanted, so much drawn into the great rapture that's only possible in the holy presence of the most holy God. Mysterium tremendum. Trembling at the same time, fascinated. Something like that, something like that truly happens in the chapter 6 of Isaiah, if you can remember it. If we don't mind, remind, remind, let me read chapter 6, verses 1 to 3, Isaiah. That passage goes like this. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a high and exalted throne. The edges of his robe filling the temple. Winged creatures were stationed around him. Each had six wings. With two they veiled their faces, with two their feet, and with their two they flew about. They shouted to each other, saying, What? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heavenly forces. 
all the earth is filled with God's glory. The door frame shook at the sound of the shouting, and the house was filled with the smoke. And Isaiah goes like this, whoa, <laughs> to me, right? Whoa, trembling, whoa, right? I'm ruined. I'm a man of, with unclean lips, and I live among a people with unclean lips. Yet I have seen the Lord, the Lord of heavenly forces. Then what happens? Then one of the winged creatures flew to me, holding a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with the tongues. He touched my mouth and says, what? See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt has departed, and your sin is removed. Then I heard the Lord's voice saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I just says, What? I'm here. I'm here. Send me, O Lord. Send me, O Lord. Now, if you can bear with me, can I take off the jacket, by the way? The holy fire <laughs> upon me. I don't know. <laughs> By the way, my name Songu means the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. We ask for the Holy Spirit. So I can just feel it now. Now, if you can bear with me, let me read chapter 6 of Isaiah verse 3. In original Hebrew, it goes like this. Vuakara, vuakara, el delje, vuamar, then kadosh. Kadosh, Kadosh, Adonai, Shvout Molo, Haaretz, Kavod. How about that? I'm not speaking tongue. I'm only speaking with my clumsy Hebrew. But it still sounds great, is that right? Let me just hear it. Let me just say one more thing, just in case you missed it, okay? Vukara Zel as a Vuhama. Kadosh, say that with me. Kadosh, Kadosh, Adonai. Tzvaot, Haaretz, Kavod. In the presence of the most holy God, Kadosh. Isaiah is what? Basically tremble, right? Woe to me. But at the same time, he is so fascinated. So enchanted, he's so much drawn into the great rapture that is only possible in the holy presence of God. Then when God says, when he asks, whom shall I send, what happens? Isaiah says, here I am. Here I am, send me all Lord. Send me all Lord. In Hebrew, he's like, hineni shalakani. Hineni shalakani. Oh Lord Adonai, send me. I am your servant. Now I'm going to be your prophet for this broken world. Friends, that's I believe. That's why I believe what we can expect to happen when we pray in the holy presence of God. When we pray, when we pray, I believe we are surrounded by and we are wrapped around by and we are deeply immersed like this morning in the holy presence mystery of God, the mysterium. And in the mysterium, I believe, we finally find true peace and true healing and true fascination and true calling for this life in all of our life circumstances. Especially, I believe, when our difficult life circumstances come upon me, I believe that when those circumstances kick into our fragile souls, I believe that is the time we must go to God, the most holy one, our papa, our grandpa, our grandma, our mommy. And God will still take care of us in all those circumstances, especially when we are really down, when we are crying, when we feel like there is no hope, when we pray, God will still rescue us, rescue you to come my salvation, because God says, what? Well, I am the most holy one, the Savior, who is your papa and mama. 
Dr. King, Dr. King, you all may remember his beautiful name, the champion of the civil rights movement, and the wonderful Baptist preacher, by the way, for just, uh, social justice, who delivered a remarkable speech in Washington, D.C. I have dream, as we all remember. But there is something some of you may not know about his life. That is this. As you may know, some of you, his house was bombed. His house was bombed a couple of times. He got countless threatening phone calls at home, many times in the middle of the night, even directed to his own children. By the way, back then, there was no cell phones. There was only landline. When it rings, it rings. <laughs> Midnight, 1 a.m., 5 a.m., doesn't matter. So he was getting all the time all those calls. And many times he almost gave up on what he was called to do for the nation, namely his fearless uh, prophetic ministry on the street. So this is what actually happened to him in his very difficult situation that is recorded in his own biography. In his own autobiography, he says this. Literally, this is his own words. He says, I was ready to give up. With my cup of coffee sitting untouched before me, I tried to think of a way to move out of the picture without appearing a coward. In this state of exhaustion, when my courage had all but gone, I decided to take my problem to God one more time. <laughs> with my head in my hands, with my head in my hands, I bowed over the kitchen table and prayed aloud. The words I spoke to God that midnight are still vivid in my memory. Lord, I'm here taking a stand for, for, for what I believe is right. But I'm now, I'm afraid. The people are looking to me for leadership, and if I stand before them without strength and courage, they too will falter. I'm at the end of my powers. I have nothing left. I've come to the point where I can't face this alone. And he goes on like this. At that moment, however, all of the sudden, all of the sudden, I experienced the presence of the divine as I had never experienced God before. And it seemed as though I could hear the quiet assurance of an inner voice saying what? Stand for justice. Stand for truth, and God will be at your side forever. That's what he was hearing. Let me say it one more time. Stand for justice, stand for truth, and God will be at your side forever. Almost at once, my fears began to go. My uncertainty disappeared. I was ready, ready to face anything anything one more time in this world. That's what Dr. King says. All the circumstances, the difficulty of life, Dr. King says what? Pray. pray. Hold your head with your hands and pray. And God, the Almighty, Adonai, El Shaddai, will come to rescue as your papa and mama and mama Mama, how about that? My mama got in this room with us all. Hallelujah. 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 Friends, as all old good black preachers says, now I have to go. Time is up. But before I go, I'd like to share these remarks. Friends of Vancouver Baptist, as we all know, life can be tough, can be broken. Especially when we stand up for justice and truth 
But simply when we want to live a life, a faithful life, life can be tough and broken. But I believe, and as we all know, as we all know, that is not the end of the story. There is always a better story after the broken story. My story and your story will move on, press on, and continue on. Because as Dr. King says, my holy papa, my God, will still faithful to always to us. And my holy mama, my God, will never ever leave us alone. And God will be still marching on with us. That's why, that's why I believe I will never ever stop singing as Dr. King said, as he proclaimed at the end of his Selma march, he was going like this. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Because God's truth is marching. God is marching. God's truth is marching. And God will be triumphant. Then I believe, as Dr. King did, and as Dr. King hear the voice of God, we will be hearing the same. And we will be doing the same. Which is what? Stand up for justice. Stand up for truth. And stand up for the poor and the broken. Then God will be at our side forever. Who is my holy papa and holy mama? And Dr. King, like Dr. King, we are going to always say what? Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. One more time. Glory, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Praise God. Praise God all the time. Our God, our mama, holy daddy, he is in this room. Holy presence, I believe so.